Hi, let's talk about uh, the program called as uh, MCR. Uh, MCR is usually given as M factorial by R factorial into M minus R factorial. So we have to find the uh, factorial of N, factorial of R, factorial of N minus R. So for this, we are going to use the uh, subroutine uh, as factorial. Okay, hope you all know that uh, functions are basically known as subroutine in uh, SM code. For the second example of uh, 5 factorial, so 5 factorial will be 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 and into 1. So we have to do sub subtraction over there and keep multiplying. So let's see the subroutine first. So it will be easy to use it in the NCR function, find NCR. So how do we find a factorial of say 5? How do we find? So what are we doing here is we are storing the numbers for whom we are finding the factorial in R1 and for putting a resultant in R2. So multiplication is the we put in R2. Okay. Now as soon as we talk about factor uh, any subroutine, the first thing inside the subroutine we have to write is always store the return address. So we have to store the return address in stack. Where the address are usually there, they are usually there in link register. So first thing of any subroutine will be usually to push LR2 stack. Okay, so I store my return address to stack. Then my first work next will be my logic. So my logic is here. I have to multiply my n with a resultant. Resultant usually starting it will be 1. So I'm storing 1 in my R2. So it is 1 into 5. So I'm multiplying 1 into 5 for my example. Then I go to store in R2. So my resultant of multiplication will be in R2. After that, I, we are going to subtract n making it n minus 1 and then compare this with 1. So I will keep multiplying. Okay, so first 5, then I'm making it 4, then I'm comparing 4 with 1. Is it 4 equal to 1? No. Since 4 is not equal to 1, I will go to step number 7 where I'm going to call this function back. So I'm going to BL is for calling the function back. So I'll go call this function back. So I'm going to call the factorial back. I'll come back, store my return address for second call, then multiply again. So what is the answer now? The previous answer was 5 into 1. So now it will be 5 into 4. So 20 will be stored in your R2. Then R1 n will become n minus 1. So it will become 3. So 3 into 3. Is it 3 equal to 1? No. Since 3 is not equal to 1, it will again jump to step number 7, which is calling the function again. So again, you will call your subroutine. Again, continue. So it will be continuing till R does not become 1. Please don't put as a 0. You hope you know if you put as 0, the problem will be whole multiplication will go off. Okay. So R1 equal to, till R1 is not equal to 1. So as soon as it becomes 1, I am going to stop it because I have found the factorial. Okay. So I'm going to find the factorial. So what is the next address after? So as soon as it becomes 1, I will not jump. What is the next instruction? Pop PC. Pop PC is take the return, uh, pop out the return address from the stack back, which we have pushed here. Okay. So I'm going to pop out the return address and come back to main program. Okay. This is about finding the factorial. So this function or subroutine we are going to call for first the n, uh, finding the n factorial. Then we'll find the r factorial. Then we are going to do for n minus r factor. Then after that we will do the division. Okay, so let's talk about that. So where is my n first? Since I have to find n factorial, my n and r will be stored in address location, so usual address location. So which is pointed by n. Okay, then I am going to find the n from this address. So I am going to read the n from this address. So I am going to read the address and store in r1. Okay, remember. Your factorial function work on two registers, n as r1 and the result as r2. So whatever factorial you want to find, you have to put the value in r1 and make r2 as 1 first. Then automatically multiplication will not create a problem. Okay, so I need to put n in r1, then put 1 in r2. Okay, so I'm going to put my and in R1 and put 1 in R, R2 and call the factorial. So I'm going to call the factorial. So this, when I call, the factorial function will return me my n factorial. So it will be where? It will be stored in R2. How do I know R2? Because if you remember, this 
is the resultant always. R2 is the resultant of multiplication. So my answer will be always in R2. So my R2 I am going to store now because I found the factorial. So I am going to store this R2 in R3. So R3 will be storing what? It stores your n factorial. So you found the n factorial and store in R3. Okay, next. The same I have to repeat for R factorial. So I am going to repeat the same thing for R factorial. Same thing. So I'll read the R1, put it, read the R and put in R1 and make R2 as well and call the function. So this will return when it, when the function is called and the function is returned, it will return me what? R factorial, which I'm going to store in R4. So I'm storing R4 as R factorial. Okay, so I have found N factorial, I have found R factorial. The next part will be N minus R factorial. So again I'm going to do the same thing, only I had to find first N minus R. So that I am doing like this. So I am getting n in R1, R in R7, subtracting it and putting in R1. And then I am calling the function. Same thing. So I am calling the function R1 as my n minus R. And this is my R2 as always 1 and call the subroutine. Then to return the subroutine, uh, the value will return in the subroutine will be n minus R factorial, which will be saved in R1. Okay. So I have R3 as n factorial, I have R3 as n factorial, R4 as r factorial, and R5 as n minus r factorial. The only thing remaining is I need to do the operation on it. So first I am dividing the R3, I am dividing my r factorial by, oh sorry, n factorial by r factorial means I am dividing R3 by r. Then resultant I am storing back in R3. So what is in R3 now? R3 is n by r factorial. Then I am dividing R, the n minus r factorial, which was in R3, with n, uh, no, R3 was having n minus n factorial by r factorial. This I am dividing with n minus r. So I will have my n minus r here. Okay. This is again resulted in storing r3. So I have got my answer. Where is my answer? My answer is in r3. So I'll go store this back in memory. Okay. So this is about your uh, step software program which I have written it down. Okay, so we are going to return it down. I will turn it down in my program. Okay, this is my program, which I am going to run now. So let's save first. Okay, the same code, I put in the same algorithm, I put in the program. Okay, so I'm going to run this. And then build and then run. So I have started with that. So I am seeing the output where I am storing NNR in memory. So I have to go to memory. So the memory window I am going to open. And which location I have? Same usual location. So I put the usual location and put my NNR. The first value is N. So say example 5. And next is your R. So say 3. So 5 comma 3. The answer should be 10. Okay, so 5, I am finding 5C3. C, uh, so my n is 5 and r is 3. So I have to run for this. So I will run the code. Okay. And I have got my answer. So my answer is 10. So you can see the answer is here as 10. Okay. So that's my NCR program. 